Hello everyone, I'm Nipun Jinder and I'm a developer at Adobe and I'd like to talk about a scratch pad for C++ using Jupyter Notebooks. The agenda for today's talk, we'll look at like what's available in terms of the tooling for enabling a scratch pad, how do we create a local setup and then some additional and bonus tips around it. So why do we really need a scratch pad? I mean, there are so many thoughts and ideas going around and we need a quick way to iterate on our thoughts and also be able to like share those ideas with other people in a non uh, resistive environment. And we can always like fall back on our, on our traditional IDEs like Visual Studio, uh, Xcode or JetBrains, but that's like too much of tooling. Can we have like something very compact which doesn't re require us to create project files and C++ files, HTTP files. So that's where Jupyter comes into picture. Now, Jupyter is an ecosystem which was created as a consistent tooling set for scientific computation and data science workflows. And it was made for starting as an exploration and then also sharing your results with other people. Uh, now, Jupyter stack in itself is basically an implementation of a layered architecture where each layer can be like uh, swapped with another component. Within this Jupyter ecosystem, there are things available as Jupyter Notebook, Jupyter Lab, Binder, and Jupyter Hub. Now let's get into one of like all of these. So Jupyter Notebook in itself is a way to represent a document, which is a cohesiveness of code plus markdown language or rich text. So Notebook would allow you to run the uh, this, this document in a server client application within a context of a browser. Now you can either run this locally on your machine, which wouldn't require any internet, or you can deploy it remotely, let's say on an AWS machine with a number of GPUs, and you can like remotely connect to this Jupyter notebook and then access your machine and run the code. Jupyter Lab, on the other hand, is a complete IDE being created as a plus plus version for interface between the project Jupyter. It can allow you to open terminal, Jupyter notebooks, text files, and whatnot. Uh, now what is ZS? ZS and ZS Cling would actually enable us to write C++ code in Jupyter Notebook. And ZS is uh, not the interpreter or the kernel, but it's the library to facilitate the authoring of kernel. And ZS Cling is a kernel for C++ programming language, which is built on Cling C++ interpreter. And Cling C++ interpreter is built on LLVM, which would JIT the C++ code. And it will give you basically a command line prompt to work with. Now let's get our hands dirty and set this up. So for setting this up on your local environment, you can reside to uh, Conda and you can create a Conda environment name as Kling. You can install from Conda Forge organizations, ZS Kling and ZS, and then activate your environment and then either launch Jupyter Notebook or Lab based on your choice. As I explained, Lab is a complete ID. Notebook would just allow you to work on that single document. Uh, to make your life easy, I have also created a setup which works on Docker and all you have to do is app build and app run. So going into that, this is the GitHub repo. And as you see, like uh, the Python notebook can actually be visualized within the context of GitHub itself. Like it's so easy, you can see everything here. So there is uh, nothing uh, which becomes really easy. Now, once I run the Docker setup, you would see this lab being run. You can either like run your kernel on 11, 14 or 17, or you can run a single file. Now I can run any C++ code here and you can just with the control enter, like run this code. If you see like in J5 and I10, and I can like run this code and then I will be 10 again. And you can run like functions, templates and whatnot into this, everything works. And as a bonus, like a lot of the other libraries, let's say a NumPy or a GNU plot are also like brought in within the ZS umbrella with like, let's say Z, Z, Z plot or uh, like a, 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 I think uh, extensor, which is a compatible for, for NumPy. Uh, now, what if you actually want to like version the Jupyter Notebooks? Jupyter Notebook have a, a, an appending um, .ipynb uh, extension, but that's how the GitHub uh, difference would look and which is pretty difficult to actually read and review. Uh, that's where Jupytex come into picture. Jupytex would allow you to remove the Jupy part of it and then just keep the text, which is let's say for a Python uh, code, just .py, or you can convert that to Markdown as well. And then file is pretty easy. Or else you could use much more nuanced uh, availabilities of software is like NDIME, NBDIME or reviewed NB, which would allow you to actually like diff the complete notebook in itself in a GUI manner. Further, for quick sharing, you could use Binder, which enables like if your library is like 
bindable and is containerized Jupyter notebooks. You can just like put your GitHub repo on a mybinder.org and get started to work with it. An example of this would be this notebook, which I just And that was a pre-record as well. But, you know, thank you, Nippon. <laughs>